So we're going to find the derivative of each of these functions. Now maybe I should have said one more thing in relation to this fundamental theorem of calculus part one. You can think of it as another differentiation rule. In differential calculus, we learn differentiation rules like the power rule, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, all of these rules for differentiation. This is another differentiation rule we can add to our toolbox. It says if we've got a function that's constructed in this way, an integral function, so if we've got an integral function, how do we differentiate it? Well, we differentiate it by, it just looks like all we did was took the x and popped it in there, because we got an answer of f of x for, its in, uh, for the derivative. So that's, that looks like this is the differentiation rule. That's what the fundamental theorem of calculus is saying. You've got a function defined by an integral. How do you differentiate? Just pop the variable x. If the lower limit of integration is constant and the upper limit is x, then just pop it into the function. So let's do that. What's the derivative here? by the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says, take that upper limit of integration and pop it in there. So this is sine x over x, and we're done. There's the derivative. Okay, so now let's look at the next example. g prime of x. That's the derivative of zero to x squared sine of t dt. Okay, so we can't just pop the x squared into sine of uh, t and be done with it because this isn't in the form that the fundamental theorem applies to. The fundamental theorem applies to integral functions of the form. The lower limit's a constant. The upper limit is x by itself. This is an x squared. So what do we do here? Well, notice that the integral from 0 to x squared of sine of t dt is a composition of two functions. It's a composition of two functions. What's the inside function? Well, think about what happens when you plug an x value in, like x equals 5. What you're going to do is you're going to plug it into, so g of 5 would be the integral from 0 to 5 squared. So the very first thing you do to the number 5 is you square it. So that's the inside function. So it's a composition of the squaring function and the integral function, integral from 0 to u, sine of t dt. So what are we going to do to differentiate a composition? We're going to use the chain rule. How do we use the chain rule? It's the derivative of the composition is the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside. So the outside function is the integral. How do we differentiate it? We just pop the upper limit of integration in. So that's where we can plug the upper limit of integration in. That's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. This is the part that the chain rule gives us. We have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And so this becomes then 2x sine of x squared. What about part c? Part c is really just now the general pattern for handling things like was done in part b. If I want to compute the derivative of the integral from 0 to h of x, f of t dt. I have to differentiate the outside function, which is the integral function. When I differentiate the outside function, that's just going to be f of whatever's inside, namely the inside function. So f of h of x. So we pop, you can think of it this way, we pop this thing in, but we also have to multiply by the derivative of it as a part of the chain rule. So now that's multiplied by h prime of x. And so this was, again, let's just re-emphasize that it is by the chain rule we get this result. Fundamental theorem of calculus is how we differentiate the outside function, which is the integral, and then the chain rule is how we're piecing these derivatives together. How about part d? g prime of x is equal to the derivative of the integral from negative 3x to e to the x ln of 1 plus t squared dt. How do we differentiate that? 
Well, again, it's not of the form that the fundamental theorem of calculus applies to. The fundamental theorem says we need the bottom limit or the lower limit of integration to be a constant, the upper limit to be x. In this case, both upper and lower limits of integration are additional functions of x. So how do we deal with that? Well, we could split up the integral into two integrals by inserting an extra limit of integration in there. So I could go from negative 3x to 0, ln of 1 plus t squared dt, and add to that the integral from 0 to e to the x of ln of 1 plus t squared dt. So I've split up the original integral into the sum of these two integrals. Now, part c allows us to differentiate this second integral. It would be plug e to the x inside and then multiply by the derivative of e to the x. This first integral, however, we can't apply because the lower limit's got the function in it and the upper limit's the constant. So first we have to flip the integral, uh, limits of integration, by adding an extra negative sign out front. And now we can differentiate each of those pieces. The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So differentiating the first piece becomes negative ln 1 plus negative 3x squared times the derivative of the inside. So times the derivative of a negative 3x, that's just negative 3, plus ln of 1 plus e to the 2x times the derivative of e to the x. And so we can write this as 3 ln of 1 plus 9x squared plus e to the x, ln of 1 plus e to the 2x. And there we go, we've computed the derivative. So those are just some examples of how you can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to differentiate these new kinds of functions, these integral functions.